welcome. I'm Tatiana Darzi. A survey conducted by the People's Bank of China shows that over half of household residents were at the verge of bankruptcy before the outbreak of the CCP virus. According to claims by CCP mouthpiece media, Xinhua News Agency, the real estate market in Beijing is recovering because of increased real estate property sales. But what they fail to mention is that people are desperately trying to sell their homes in order to have money to survive and because they can no longer afford to pay their mortgages. The impact of the CCP virus on the Chinese economy is tremendous and many Chinese citizens are selling their homes because they can no longer afford to pay the mortgage. However, the CCP's media mouthpiece claims that the real estate industry is recovering. Scholars have pointed out the fact that citizens simply cannot afford to buy a house, and it is the CCP's attempt to use policies and media to drive up real estate prices. The CCP's mouthpiece media, Xinhua News Agency, recently claimed that real estate in Beijing was recovering and that the supply and demand of housing showed signs of recovery in March and April. They claim that it is hopeful that a speedy recovery happens in the second quarter of the real estate market. Yet, the People's Bank of China published a 2019 China Urban Resident Household Asset and Liability Survey at the end of April, indicating that more than half of the household residents were at the verge of bankruptcy before the CCP virus outbreak, and that 70% of their assets are in real estate, and more than 56% of real estate has mortgages. In other words, their houses will be taken away by the bank when they stop paying their mortgages. An observer on businesses in mainland China, Wen Rui, expressed that after the CCP virus hit the country, people were having a hard time with their daily expenses, not to mention having extra money to invest in real estate. He believes that the so-called recovery is a ruse. People want to get rid of their homes and turn assets to cash if they are planning to move abroad. Right now, there are many people who are doing exactly this, but there are no buyers in the market, so the government wants to do a little demonstration depicting that the real estate market is doing well. But in reality, this is fake and it is impossible for the industry to be in good condition now. Online videos uploaded by netizens show that Chinese people are now trying to sell their homes by listing them as second-hand houses, causing a decline in the house prices. Duan Shao Yi is a Chinese economist who referred to the recovery as the result of some interest groups trying to manipulate public opinion to drive up house prices. After all, China is a country where policies have a big impact on the economy, and the interest groups who are in power legitimizes a lot of outcomes they hope to receive. Many people among the high-profile CCP officials are blaming the United States every day but they have sent their children to the U.S. and transferred their property to the United States. If they want to sell their house at a good price, they need to come up with a policy that would make it easier for buyers to take over the property. Wen also indicated that it is unlikely for the CCP to successfully use the real estate industry to boost up the economy because of China's economic problems, including the pandemic. They are actually caused by structural problems in the political system. Wen Rui reminds people that the Chinese Communist Party lies and that they should not fall into this trap. A woman in Wuhan has been followed and stopped by police officers and community workers after being interviewed by a BBC reporter. The reporter only asked a few questions regarding the Wuhan residents' viewpoint, and for this, she was intercepted and taken away by force, causing irreparable damage to her shoulder that made her unable to work. Around 5 p.m. on May 22nd, Wuhan petitioner Miss Iris was intercepted by more than a dozen policemen and community workers after she did an interview with a foreign media reporter. Related videos were quickly spread online. Iris said on Twitter that after she was interviewed by a BBC reporter, she was followed closely by three policemen and seven or eight community workers. They stopped her in a small roadside park. They even stopped the taxi she called in front of the BBC reporter's car. He just asked some views of Wuhan residents. I just expressed my own thoughts directly. I didn't exaggerate anything, and I didn't know that they would come to intercept me. She asked, are you trying to expose your ugliness? Iris said that the police and community workers wouldn't let her go and pulled her away. She called a taxi, but they blocked the front of the car, not letting the taxi driver go and even threatening him. Iris revealed to reporters that last October, the Wuhan metro was under construction near her house, which made cracks in her house, making it unlivable. She went to the subway office to defend her rights. 
However, her shoulder was torn by community workers, causing irreversible injuries which made her unable to work until now. Despite filing complaints many times, she didn't receive any response. But after accepting an interview from a foreign media, suddenly a community worker called her, saying that they would resolve some of her claims, but they only reimbursed some medical expenses from the early stage. Iris said that her road to defending her rights is so bumpy. For example, I went to the office for letters and calls. The person I was going to file a complaint with was the person who responded to my case. What kind of effect do you think it would have? No effect at all. They even fabricated the responses to petitions. They are totally unsupervised. I think it's so scary. They're putting on shows themselves. Iris also tweeted that she is really patriotic and hopes that the political system will be more open. Based on this principle, she only gave some mild criticism in a limited scope. But because of it, she had such an unexpected experience. It made her feel scared. The wife of an illegally detained human rights lawyer has been monitored and followed during China's two-session meeting. There were also times that she wasn't allowed to go out. Her husband was arrested by Beijing police in January 2018 for representing Falun Gong practitioners and wasn't given trial. He hasn't been heard from since. Chinese human rights lawyers and their families have been under tight control during the Chinese Communist Party's, CCP's, two sessions. Among them is Xu Yan, the wife of Beijing lawyer Yu Wensheng, who was arrested in 2018 and hasn't been heard of since. Xu Yan has been monitored since before the two sessions and spoke about her situation in a May 22nd interview with NTD. A national security officer in Xu Jingshan, Beijing, called me on May 15th and told me to come downstairs and meet with them. When I refused to cooperate, they berated me on the phone. Then on May 18th and 19th, I found that someone followed me when I went out. Since May 20th, they have been on monitoring duty outside the apartment building. Xu said she doesn't know how long they are going to monitor her. I went out yesterday and was followed by them. They didn't stop me from going out, but I don't know what will happen today. There were many times when they wouldn't even let me go out. They were on duty downstairs this morning. There is still no information about Yu Win Sheng's case. He has been unlawfully detained for a long time without trial, which seriously violates the law and is very inhumane. Xu asked for people in the international community to pay more attention to her situation as well as to her husband's case. She also called on the CCP to immediately issue a verdict according to the law, acquitting and releasing her husband as soon as possible. Yu Wensheng was arrested by Beijing police in January 2018 for representing Falun Gong practitioners and 709 lawyer Wang Quanzhang. Since then, his family, friends, and even lawyers haven't been able to see him. In April of 2018, Yu Wensheng was arrested by the Jiangsu police for inciting subversion of state power. His case was handled in secret last May, and no judgment has been pronounced so far. During these past two years, Xu has been summoned, interrogated, detained, and abused by the police many times for her public activism, calling for her husband's release. She has met with many foreign ambassadors in China, who told her they would continue to pay attention to his case. Two young human rights activists were imprisoned together for speaking out against the Chinese Communist Party in favor of freedom of speech and demanding freedom for human rights lawyers. One of them even told his lawyer that he had shown support for a Falun Gong practitioner who is imprisoned and on hunger strike. Zhang Pancheng, a young man who recorded a video to publicly criticize the CCP's one-party dictatorship, was released from prison on May 20th. Talking to the Chinese-language Epoch Times about Zhang's incarceration, Beijing-based human rights advocate Li Bohong revealed that prison guards had his blood drawn dozens of times without asking for his permission or explaining the necessity of the tests. Zhang said he was in prison together with another young man, Qi Yuan, who was arrested for speaking negatively about the CCP. In November 2018, Zhang had broadcast a live video of Qi protesting at the entrance of Zhongnanhai. Qi was wearing black with the characters Defend Freedom of Speech, Free Human Rights Lawyers, Restore Lawyers' Qualifications printed on the front, and Oppose Xi's ban on free commenting in his act in opposition to right principles, Oppose the CCP's one-party dictatorship printed on the back. Before they were arrested by the authorities, Zhang managed to share the video on WeChat. 
On April 4, 2020, a CCP court sentenced Chi to two years and Zhang to 1.5 years in prison for the crime of picking quarrels and provoking trouble. During a prison visit, Chi told his lawyer Liang Xiaojun that he had shown support for a Falun Gong practitioner of conscience who was on a hunger strike. He said he had joined the Falun Gong practitioner to shout, Falun Dafa is good, truthfulness, compassion, forbearance is good. Another human rights advocate, Cheng Hongwang, had been told by the detention center that Zhang would be released at 9 or 10 a.m. on May 20th. He had planned to join Li and the Zhang family in receiving the young man upon his release from prison. But Chen ended up being grounded at home by local authorities as police acted to limit travel around the capital ahead of the CCP's two sessions annual meeting. Once the meeting started, people's movements were all controlled. People either get grounded at home or get forced to travel. Around 7 a.m. on May 20th, Zhang's family arrived at the detention center in Beijing's Xicheng district with Li to await Zhang's release. It was not until 10 a.m. that they saw Zhang come running out of the detention center, escorted by more than 10 men. Li said that Zhang had become thin and pale after likely malnourishment in prison. He said that when he was in prison, his blood was drawn plenty of times. He said it was around dozens of times. His health condition, from what I can tell, he is lacking nutrition. The skin color is pale and yellow. That's a sign of being physically weak. His mental state is still vibrant, probably supported by his spiritual strength. When asked whether he knew anything about Chi's situation, Li said he had not been able to visit the young man. I have heard that Liang Xiaojun can visit Qi because he is his lawyer, he added. Qi Yuan was born in 1991 in Wuxi, Jiangsu province, and had studied in Australia for two years. Zhang Panchen was born in 1995 and grew up as a left-behind kid in rural Gansu province. He once worked as a security guard at Peking University. A mother in Wuhan wants to hold the Chinese regime accountable for the death of her daughter after her daughter contracted the CCP virus at a local hospital. She wants to hold the regime responsible for not warning its citizens about the outbreak of the virus. When she attempted to state her concern to the local government, the authorities disconnected her cell phone, cutting her connection to the outside world. Many Wuhan residents contracted the CCP virus because they visited the hospital for medical care of other illnesses, not knowing about the outbreak and the severity of human transmission. Miss Young's daughter visited the doctor on January 16th. On the 19th, she developed a fever and died 18 days later. Miss Young went to the local government to redress the injustice. Consequently, she was locked in her apartment. Her cell phone line was cut off and so was her connection to the outside world. The Epic Times received the recording of her visit at the local government office. Miss Young versus staff at Wuhan Municipal Committee Office. She won't go to the petition office. She insists that she's not petitioning. All right, I'll explain to you when you come. I told you, you should go to the petition office. I am not here to petition. I have told you, I am here to file a complaint. Right, go to the petition office. It's not that we are not sympathetic. I am not asking for your sympathy. I am not here for sympathy. I am sitting here quietly, but you. The rule is posted by the door. You have no justification for being here. What rule? Show me the rule. This is not the petition office. If you don't leave, I'll get the police. Go to the petition office. We can't help you here. I am not asking you to solve anything. Why are you sitting here? I'm here to maintain the order. Let me tell you why I am here. I wanted to file a complaint for my child. She died because the government hid the outbreak. She was only 24 years old. Everyone, please listen and help to publicize this. My ID number is listed in my complaint. I promise you everything I said is true. So you are not here to resolve anything? My child died on February 6th. I want the government to punish those officials who covered up the outbreak. The outbreak was made known last November and December by the authorities. They kept it from the people. The mayor, Zhou Xianwang, 
even hosted a mass banquet with 13,986 dishes on January 18th. Why didn't they notify the people? This is murdering Wuhan. Lives. Many lives are now gone. This is my child. My only child. Not even 25 years old. She was infected in the hospital. She went to the hospital to save her life, but she actually lost her life by going to the hospital. Who should I talk to? Go to the petition office. The petition office would not care. I went to the district office, but they actually made up excuses by saying that Wuhan residents were notified on December 31st. Zhou Shangwang has already stepped down. Step down. That's it? So many people have died. It's all because they covered up. I have all the details written within. The CCTV news has all been deleted from the 2nd to the 10th. This is not something any individual can do. Why don't you post it online to seek help? I did, but it was trashed within five minutes. They don't allow you to talk about it. That Dr. Li Wenliang and the other doctors, who had them disciplined and warned? That was not something the hospital could do on its own. Who could do it? Isn't it the government? Who else could have done it? Redress? How can you redress the loss of thousands of lives? A person would get punished for wrongdoing, but what about a government? How can we forget about it? Thousands of lives are now gone. A killer will be punished. He has killed so many lives. How could he just go free? He stepped down here, but he'll resume his post somewhere else. The health committee ordered all virus samples destroyed on the 31st. My child went to the hospital not knowing anything about the outbreak. None of us knew anything about it. They kept the outbreak a secret from us. My daughter had the infection on the 19th. She had a fever, 41 degrees Celsius, 106 degrees Fahrenheit, for eight days. She was completely unconscious. As her mother, how can I not complain for her? Do you know she died miserably? Her eyes were staring at me. Oh heaven, I couldn't bear to think of it. My poor child, who can help me? Good heaven, give my girl back to me. I just had one girl. I followed the party's call to have just one child. I obeyed the party. What has the party returned to me? My child was killed, but where's my justice? God, where is my justice? You were all born and raised by humans. Where are your hearts? Good heaven, please open your eyes and punish those criminals. I am a person in this land. Heaven, you do bless this country. Let this country give me my justice. The government covered up the outbreak and killed my child. Where is justice in this world? It was Mother's Day yesterday. Mothers, please spread this for me. The government covered up the outbreak and killed many. It killed my girl. Heaven, help me. Joshua Phillip, the host of Crossroads, discusses that complaints have been filed against the Biden Center for not disclosing very large donations from the Chinese regime. It isn't clear whether Joe Biden is directly involved. And just recently, it seems the Biden Center is getting caught up in some of this controversy. First up, we have the National Legal and Policy Center, which just filed a complaint against the University of Pennsylvania and the Biden Center for undisclosed what they call Chinese mega donations. Since 2017 alone, when the Biden Center opened and after Joe Biden announced he was running for president in April 2018, the university received over $70 million from China, of which $22 million were listed as anonymous. And it continues, federal law requires the disclosure of the source of all donations over $250,000. Now, just being clear on this, it's not clear whether Biden was directly involved in this, and the issue of universities accepting large donations from China, including undisclosed donations, is one of the major topics in the U.S. right now. To watch the entire video on Crossroads, please visit the link below. 
The following charts show you the most recent numbers regarding the CCP virus pandemic. The Chinese Communist Party's cover-up led to a pandemic that now threatens the lives of people around the globe. With over 5.7 million people infected, China is still defensive about independent international inquiry into the origin and spread of the CCP virus. The Epoch Times has initiated a global signed the petition campaign calling for investigating, condemning, and rejecting the CCP. We believe that investigating and exposing the truth is the only way that we can remain safe. Let's take action. Sign the petition at ccpvirustruth.com. That's all for today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this program with friends and family to keep them informed about the latest news and updates. Thank you for joining me. See you next time.